Good evening. You're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell and these are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. Jaish e Mohammed Chief Maulana Masood Azhar taken into custody in Pakistan as the Pak authorities begin acting on evidence given by India. Kerala becomes the first state to attain total primary education. Vice President Mohammad Abed Ansari says it's a model for the rest of the country to follow. In a big relief for farmers, Union Cabinet gives nod to implementing crop insurance scheme. Insurance coverage to go up to 50% of total crop area from current 23%. U.S. President Barack Obama gives his seventh and last State of Union address, strikes optimistic note as he highlights his government's accomplishments. And Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis continue their winning run, equal record for longest women's doubles winning streak. For the top story this evening, Jaish e Mohammed Chief Maulana Masood Azhar has been apprehended by Pakistan as the country toughened a crackdown on the terror outfit that is claimed to be behind the Pathan Kot attack. With Wednesday's crackdown, Pakistan has started acting on leads provided by India. Maulana Masood Azhar, the chief of Jaish e Mohammed, his brother, and many individuals belonging to his dreaded outfit have been arrested by authorities in Pakistan. Jaish e Mohammed is suspected to be behind the Pathan Kot terror attack. Authorities also sealed the terror group's offices days after India demanded action against the group, linking it to the fate of foreign secretary level talks. While the arrest of others was announced in a press release from Pak PM's office, there has been no official word on Azhar's detention. Pakistan also said that a special investigation team will be sent to Pathan Court for further probe, adding that considerable progress has been made in the investigations. As far as SIT is concerned, it will be too early to send, you know. First of all, they should investigate in their own country, you know. Then they plan to come to India, you know. It, I think it is early to send a team, you know. They should make some progress, get confidence of India, and then one can think about it. It's a very good news that the Pakistanis have detained two of the terrorists uh, in their custody now. That is a clear indication that the Prime Minister of Pakistan is very serious about the commitment of fighting terrorism. Azhar became a part of the collective Indian conscience when he and two other terrorists were released from an Indian prison in 1999 in exchange for the release of 155 passengers of a hijacked Indian Airlines plane. The Pakistani action has come as the fate of the foreign secretary level talks scheduled to start on Friday hangs in the balance. India has strongly suggested that without action against those responsible for the attacks, it will not go ahead with the talks. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And let's go across to Pakistan from where we joined on the phone line by Imtiaz Gul, senior journalist and political analyst from Islamabad. Thank you very much for talking to us, Mr. Gul. Uh, my first question, of course, is uh, how seriously is Pakistan taking this? Because while uh, Maulana Masood Azhar has been apprehended, many in India are saying that he's not been arrested. This is not really a crackdown. And uh, things like this have happened in the past also, even after the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks. Well, I think uh, the public opinion in India shall have to somehow change a little bit, be more realistic, less sarcastic, uh, just because uh, uh, things cannot move in Pakistan as wished but desired by India. However, Pakistan itself, I think, is correcting itself, uh, uh, particularly the year and a half. The past year and a half, we have seen many changes very gradually and uh, uh, somehow, uh, the Indian government, Indian people have to look at whatever small measures are being taken uh, uh, with, uh, with sincerity, and they have to take them as sincere small steps that are being taken to deal with a phenomenon that has existed in this country for over three decades. It's not uh, going to be easy. It's a very, very difficult path. But I think what Pakistan needs is also 
sort of considerable appreciation from its neighbors mm-hmm. for the small steps that it is taking. It, it certainly is not going to, uh, the change is not going to come overnight. Uh, for that, I think international engagement will be, as well as appreciation will be necessary to help Pakistan stay this course. Absolutely. And this perhaps uh, is the reason why uh, the India-Pakistan foreign secretary level talks still hang in the balance. Pakistan acting and we're waiting and watching as to what India does next. But Mr. Gul, as far as uh, other activities on the ground are concerned uh, in Pakistan and its crackdown on terror, what about uh, the terror infrastructure, the t- training camps, etc. that uh, are often uh, do exist? Uh, is there a crackdown that's going down on uh, them as well? Well, I think... Uh you shall have to understand, people in India shall have to recognize that here you are dealing with uh, people, ideologically driven people, uh, people who, have, who are socio-politically entrenched, uh, who have constituencies within political parties, within the military establishment, and uh, just cracking down on them uh, without any backup plans, without reintegration plans, uh, means basically creating more problems. So it requires a certain pattern, very calibrated, calculated uh, way of handling. And I think this is what has uh, 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 what the government uh, has started, uh, at least in the last year or so. And one, I, I am very much confident that uh, Pakistan, if Pakistan government stays this course, both the government and the military, uh, things could gradually improve. Uh, however, one should not expect that these things uh, will improve within a month or two or six. It's, a, it's going to be a long haul, very, very difficult task ahead, a tough time and a, right. a testing time, I think, for Pakistan, which seems to be you know, changing its, its security paradigm. All right, indeed. And is that coming uh, because of uh, U.S. pressure? Because we heard uh, U.S. President Barack Obama mention Pakistan when he was talking about new terror centers in his State of the Union address. So is there a change dynamic as far as the U.S.-Pakistan relationship goes? Well, I think forget about the United States, it, which itself has created so many new terror centers by creating uh, artificial opposition in first in in, uh, in Libya and then mounting uh, 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 unleashing uh, an artificial opposition against Bashar al-Assad in in Syria and see what has hap- happened in Iraq. It's I think very much the doing of the U.S. and its uh, major partners that we see now new centers, new terror organizations that have emerged. Nobody can really deny what, what role all these big power geopolitics has had in the creation of Al-Qaeda or Daesh. So all we are trying, we should hope that the countries find indigenous solutions for their problems, uh, whether it's India, Afghanistan or Pakistan, and that they should right. also work together in, in a regional framework to deal with these issues rather than listening to what Obama or David Cameron say. All right, Mr. Gold, we'll leave it over there. Thank you very much for joining us this evening and giving us a perspective from what's happening over there in Pakistan. Of course, as I said, the foreign secretary talks uh, hang in the balance over there. We're waiting for India to come out with a statement whether the talks will happen on the 15th and whether foreign secretary as Jay Shankar will travel to Islamabad. Now, meanwhile, Army Chief General Dalbir Singh Sohar to put out a strong statement saying that the Indian Army was ready to take up any challenge. His remarks come uh, just a day after Defence Minister Manohar Parakar said that those who wreak uh, terror havoc in India will be paid back in the same coin. General Suhag also dismissed reports that there was a lack of coordination among teams during the Pathan court attack. I would like to assure the nation that your army is highly motivated, similarly focused, fully prepared and ready to respond to any threats or challenges to our national security. Close on the heels of Defence Minister Manohar Parikar's remark on the Pathan court attack, warning of a payback in the same coin, Army Chief General Dalbir Singh said on Wednesday that Army was ready to take up any challenge. Even though he chose not to comment directly on Parikar's remark, he blamed the Pakistani Army for having derailed the peace process a number of times in the past. The Pakistan Army ka role hai, uske aap haroz pad bhi rahe hain, papers ke andar, aur <coughs> news ke andar abhi raha hai, TV ke andar. Hamne जो एविडेंस हमें मिले हैं वो एविडेंस दे दिए हैं डिटेल्स ऑफ एविडेंस क्या-क्या दिए हैं वो तो एनआईए और सिक्योरिटी एजेंसी का काम है वो उन्होंने किया है उसका डिटेल में बात भी करेंगे लेकिन 
डेफिनेटली हमारे पास आ, मैंने खुद देखा है वहाँ पर आ, मार्किंग्स जो हैं मेडिसिन के ऊपर मार्किंग्स पाकिस्तान की हैं सिमिलरली बाकी कुछ इक्विपमेंट्स हैं उनके ऊपर मार्किंग्स हैं तो उनसे साफ जाहिर होता है कि वो आए तो वहाँ से हैं जहाँ तक इन्वॉल्वमेंट है वो अभी आ, एविडेंस दिए हैं और उसके ऊपर आई थिंक जांच जारी है The army chief's remarks come in the backdrop of reports that Pakistani establishment was not on board with their prime minister Nawaz Sharif when it came to talks with India. On Pathan Court attack, General Suhag said there was no lack of coordination. I want to inform that it is not two columns. There were eight columns of the army, and each column had almost seventy people. And also, in addition, the para. Uh, special forces uh, team was also there therefore uh, that report i just want to clarify the nsc had initially just one team but army had eight teams and on ground it was the army brigade commander who was controlling the army columns the army chief said this while addressing his annual press conference ahead of army day celebrations bureau report rajya sabha tv The Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari declared Kerala as the first state to attain a total primary education. Describing the achievement as historic, the Vice President said that Kerala has set a model for the rest of the country to follow. Uh, Vice President Ansari called it another feather to the state's educational cap and said that the state was making the successful culmination of its Athulyam program aimed at ensuring total primary education that is equivalent to standard four of formal education. He credited with the, the achievement to the state's political leadership, public functionaries, and the people of the state who valued the importance of education. Earlier, the vice president uh, visited the Shivagiri Math, a revered spiritual, uh, spiritual center in Varkala in Kerala. After paying respects at the Mahasamadhi Mandapam, uh, the renovated stairway was opened to public. The vice president also launched the centenary celebrations of two books written and authored by the Math Guru. I believe that the day today is as historic for Kerala as was 18th April 1991 the day Kerala was declared to be a fully literate state Today Kerala adds another feather to her educational cap The state is marking the successful culmination of its atholium program aimed at ensuring total primacy primary education in the state equivalent to standard 4 of formal education this was the fructification of the continuing effort under the total literacy campaign through the well planned and executed post literacy activities and the continuing education program by the kerala state literacy mission authority under the government of kerala the union government has cleared a new crop insurance scheme at the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana the scheme will have a premium as low as 2% of kharif for kharif crops and 1.5% for rabi crops aaj ki cabinet ne ye faisla kiya hai ki ek nayi fasal bima yojana lagu ki jayegi jise pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana kaha jayega Announcing the decision made at Wednesday's cabinet meeting, the Home Minister termed the new crop insurance scheme as a shield to protect farmers from weather changes. The new scheme aims to increase the insurance coverage to 50% of the total crop area of 194.40 million hectare from the existing level of 23%. The center will incur an expenditure of around 9000 crore rupees. Kharif mein 2% and rabi mein 1.5% और पहले पंद्रह प्रतिशत तक था यानी पहले ज्यादा लगाओ और कम पाओ और अब कम लगाओ और ज्यादा पाओ तो ग्यारह प्रतिशत के कैपिंग के कारण नुकसान की पूरी भरपाई नहीं होती थी उसको इस नई बीमा योजना के अंतर्गत उस कैपिंग को हटा दिया गया है The cabinet also gave its approval to the constitution of an empowered committee of secretaries to process the recommendations of the सेवेंथ सेंट्रल पे कमीशन विशाल दहिया Rajya Sabha TV Delhi Time for us to take a short break lots more on the other side do stay tuned
the Pathan court shadow on India Pak ties. India seeks decisive action from Pakistan, a prerequisite to resuming dialogue. What exactly is decisive action? Watch the big picture at 9:30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Time now for an update on the political situation in Arunachal Pradesh, where the Supreme Court today ordered that the proceedings of the Arunachal Pradesh Assembly will not be held till Friday. This after the Apex Court decided to start hearing various pleas on the ongoing political battle in the state starting tomorrow. The political battle pertains to two sides uh, of the Congress Party, with Chief Minister Nabam Tuki on one side and 14 dissident Congress MLAs on the other. The Supreme Court's intervention comes in the wake of the Guwahati High Court order okaying the dissident action of removing Speaker Nabam Rebia. Rebia was removed uh, from the post by 14 rebel Congress MLAs and BJP MLAs on December 16th in an assembly session presided over by the Deputy Speaker in a community hall in Itanagar. Before removing Rebia from the post, the Deputy Speaker had also quashed the disqualification of the rebel Congress legislators. Later, various decisions of the governor and the deputy speaker were challenged by Rebia in the Guwahati High Court. And we're joined by a rebel Congress MLA, Mr. Pasang Dorji Sonaf, to help us understand what will be uh, your next uh, strategy, uh, Mr. Soda, after uh, the Supreme Court has said this. Hi. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Can you be a little louder? I can't hear you properly. Yeah, I was asking, uh, how, how would you be uh, responding to this, uh, the fact that the Supreme Court has uh, stayed proceedings till Friday? No, they no, they haven't stayed the proceeding as yet. Uh, I think they have filed the SLP. That's what we got to know. All right, so uh, in a sense, uh, what would your arguments then Hello? before the Supreme Court of India be? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, your voice is breaking. Actually, uh, I'm not able to hear you properly. All right, can the you hear network, me now? Maybe. Hello? Yes, I was just asking as of, to your course of action in the Supreme Court vis-a-vis uh, -vis this case. Well, we seem to have lost the connection uh, with uh, Mr. Pasang Dorji Sona. He's one of the rebel Congress MLAs. Uh, Arunachal Pradesh, remember, has been caught in this imbroglio for some time now. And the Supreme Court now has uh, said uh, that it uh, will uh, start hearing a pleas on the ongoing political battle in the state starting tomorrow. This uh, move was necessitated after there were the Congress party almost split with 14 dissident Congress MLAs uh, joining ranks with the BJP, holding a session in a community hall in Itanagar and disqualifying the Speaker. The MLA say uh, the Chief Minister Navam Tuki has uh, lost uh, the confidence of the House. Uh, the Chief Minister, on the other hand, insists that uh, the, as far as the conduct of the MLAs is concerned, uh, that uh, itself was uh, highly uh, unconstitutional. Uh, so, as far as the suspended MLAs and their course of action, or the dissident MLAs, where I may call them. Uh, we are joined uh, by one of those dissident MLAs, Pasang Dorji Sona. And let's just ask him, what's your next course of action? What will you be presenting before the Supreme Court? See, see, see it's a very natural phenomenon that uh, they will obviously appeal uh, the apex court. But till the time we uh, know, know from the court, you know, we do not know how to react to the entire situation. But as of, as of now, the, gov the Guwahati High Court uh, judgment, which has come, which has come totally in our favor, they have quashed the order, the interim order, which was given on 17th of December, has been quashed. So all the, all the proceedings which took place uh, has been, you know, legally and constitutionally valid. So next course of action, course of action will be if the governor calls us for, uh, calls uh, us for a swearing in. I mean, the... Mr. Kalikopoul for swearing in, uh, then uh, we will go there. All right, we'll have to wait and watch as to this, how the situation develops. But thank you, sir, very much for joining us for now and helping us understand your side of the story. Moving on now to some international news and putting aside uh, the crisis with Iran, U.S. President Barack Obama delivered his final State of the Union address on Tuesday. He struck an optimistic note as he highlighted his government's accomplishments, especially on new policies on the health front. He also argued that the U.S. has the strongest and most durable economy in the world. Here's more. The President of the United States!
Our unique strengths as a nation, our optimism and work ethic, our spirit of discovery, these things give us everything we need to ensure prosperity and security for generations to come. In fact, it's in that spirit that we have made progress these past seven years. The U.S. President Barack Obama touting legacy in his last State of Union address. Setting an optimistic tone for 2016, Obama criticized the negative tone of the ongoing presidential race. He knocked off the Republican comments that the U.S. was declining economically. The speech to the Congress also highlighted his accomplishments, especially on health reforms and economic policies. The United States of America, right now, has the strongest, most durable economy in the world. We're in the middle of the longest streak of private sector job creation in history. Obama also focused on immigration policies, the need to tackle income inequality, and maintain national security despite conflicts in the international front. He urged the Congress to support for a transition to clean energy. With less than a year left for his presidency to end, Obama also laid out his plan of action for 2016 to close the Guantanamo Bay prison, achieve meaningful criminal justice reform, addressing rising tide of prescription drug abuse, authorize the use of military force against Islamic State and to lift the embargo on Cuba. Both Al-Qaeda and now ISIL pose a direct threat to our people because in today's world even a handful of terrorists who place no value on human life, including their own, can do a lot of damage. We have to take them out. However, his speech drew criticism from the Republican presidential candidates. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump tweeted that Obama's speech was non-substantive. Our brand of democracy is hard. Obama's seventh and last State of Union address was the microcosm of his entire presidency. Analysts said his address will be remembered not for his policy prescriptions, but for its upbeat assessment of how much better America is in the present times. God bless the United States of America. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Onto the crisis in the Korean Peninsula, where South Korea fired warning shots after a North Korean drone briefly entered its territory on Wednesday. The drone, which was seen flying above a South Korean military observatory post at the border between the two countries, immediately returned to North Korea. South Korea on Wednesday fired 20 machine gun warning shots after a North Korean drone briefly crossed its borders. The first shots fired in a Cold War-style standoff between the Koreas in the wake of the North's nuclear test last week. The North Korean drone was flying dozens of meters south of its border and turned back to the north after the shots were fired. The shots, however, did not hit the drone. North Korean drone flights across the world's most heavily armed border are rare, but have happened before. South Korea also warned North Korea on Wednesday that the United States and its allies were working on sanctions and called on China to do its part to rein in its isolated neighbor. South Korean president said China should play a key role. 실제 필요한 조치로 연결되지 않는다면 앞으로 다섯 번째, 여섯 번째 추가 핵실험도 막을 수가 없고 한반도의 진정한 평화와 안정도 담보될 수 없다는 점을 중국도 잘 알고 있을 것으로 봅니다. Later in the day, top nuclear negotiators from the United States, Japan and South Korea met in Seoul to discuss North Korea's nuclear test. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Seven people are reported to have been killed in a suicide bomb attack and subsequent gunfire outside the Pakistani consulate in the Afghan city of Jalalabad. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. The attack took place not far away from the Indian consulate. Afghan security forces swiftly responded to the attack and engaged with the gunmen barricaded in a house. 
near the Pakistan consulate. Two gunmen were also killed in the ensuing battle that lasted nearly four hours. The attack comes uh, days after four country talks uh, in Islamabad aimed at reviving Taliban peace negotiations. Indian interests have also been targeted twice this month, an attack on the Indian consulate in mazar sharif while a small bomb also exploded near the Indian consulate in Jalalabad last Tuesday. The German Interior Minister Thomas de Marise visited Istanbul for a brief visit on Wednesday. The visit follows Tuesday's suicide bombing that killed 10, peop uh, 10 people. Nine of them were Germans. Another German citizen later died in hospital. Marise held talks with Turkish leaders before visiting his wounded countrymen in the hospital during the visit. After the meeting with the Turkish officials, the German Interior Minister said that there were no indications that German had been Germans had been deliberately targeted in Tuesday's suicide bomb attack. One person has been detained as part of the investigation into the blast, which the Turkish authorities have said was carried out by a member of the Islamic State who had recently travelled from Syria. Nach dem bisherigen Stand der Ermittlungen gibt es keine Hinweise darauf, dass der Anschlag sich gezielt gegen Deutsche gerichtet hat. Und deswegen kann es dann auch keinen Zusammenhang geben mit unserem Beitrag zum Kampf gegen den internationalen Terrorismus. Dieser Anschlag nach dem bisherigen Stand der Ermittlungen richtet sich gegen die Menschlichkeit. Time now for all the sports action and sports beat. Indian tennis ace Sanya Mirza and her Swiss partner Martina Hingis equaled the record for the longest women's doubles winning streak by advancing to the semi final of the Sydney International. The top seeds defeated China's Chen Liang and Chuai Peng 6 2 6 3 to extend their winning streak to 28 matches. They now need to win one more game to beat the record set by Puerto Rican Gigi Fernandez and Belarus's Natasha Zvereva in 1994. FIFA today fired General Secretary Jerome Valk for his alleged role in corruption involving World Cup ticket sales. FIFA's Ethics Committee had announced opening formal proceeding, uh, proceedings against Valk last week. Valk has denied any wrongdoing. The Guatemalan police have arrested the former head of the country's football federation in connection with a corruption probe into the sports world governing body, FIFA. Brian uh, Jimenez has been on the run since last month after the U.S. issued an arrest warrant for 16 Latin American football officials. Paul Dummett scored a last-minute equaliser as Newcastle secured a pulsating 3-3 home draw against Manchester United. United led the game 2-0, but Newcastle equalised in the second half. Wayne Rooney's second goal seemed to have given United a win, but Dummett's late goal saw United slip to 6 years. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night.